Hello. Hi, I'm Jeff Ryman, and I'm going to read you a short excerpt from a novel, which is actually set here in this place, a garden in rural Oxfordshire in a muggy, overly warm, what we call summer in England. Uh, the novel is called Animals. It's meant to be a sort of Stephen King style horror novel. It's about animals, our relationship to them. And in the little short bit, because short's best, uh, we've got a little boy called Teddy. He's English, but his mom's an American actress, and they live uh, a life of blameless domesticity, raising animals in West Oxfordshire. And he has a lovely little cat that he's fond of. It's his pet. And he's a somewhat troubled kid. I'm a somewhat troubled adult, but there we go. In the shade, it was 41 degrees. Our garden was full of the stench of death, so much so it smelled like fire. The air slumped, exhausted. I noticed little one's food dish was untouched. I was as nervous as a tripwire. Mom, little one's not eating. Mom was still in her bathroom, washing. What? She flung the door open, still wrapped in her bathrobe. It, it's probably just the heat. I don't think she's touched her water. She took hold of my arm. Well, let's go see how she is. We couldn't find the cat. The first place we checked was the mountain of ash. Uh, it was always cool and shaded and had a chair. Then we thought she might be in her first home, the woodshed. So I peered in that, making the plaintive meow. 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 I called her. Lit, lit, little one, little one. Lit, 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 lit little one, little one. My voice was soft because... Uh, if I'd really shouted and she hadn't come, it would make it real. She liked to sun herself on the old garden tables, but she went, wasn't there. So I went back to the mountain of ash. I sat on the white plastic weatherproof throne. I didn't have a book to read. I just stayed there. Mm -hmm not wanting to move or cry aloud. She was a private cat. She liked to be alone sometimes. I was being silly. I'd see her soon. It was just the heat. I tried not to meow or call. She would come. I'd, I'd see her any minute. But she didn't come. I knew I was making my wimpy face. My mouth all bunched up against itself. Then I heard Mom call me, and she sounded worried, so I came out. I sighed theatrically. Ha! Ah. Lightly, like there was nothing wrong. Ha! Ah. I can't find her, Mom. Oh, she's, she's probably out in the long grass hunting. Shall we do your math? I said okay to make things normal. So she tried to explain how to make percentages out of fractions. I kept looking out the big terrace windows. Finally, Mom put her hand on top of mine. Let's go and try her again. This time we both looked together, both of us calling. Finally, we heard a, a tiny sound a squeak, more like a hedgehog. I shouted, and uh, she came crawling out from under the winter jasmine on her belly. I'll get her blanket, you get the vet cage, said Mom. 
a little one was always so tame when we took her to the vets. It was like she trusted us to do no harm. She never hissed or clawed or fought. She'd just slip into the cage. She might yowl a bit when the car turned or bounced. This time she crawled onto her blanket into the cage. I uh, put my hand on her back, but I didn't have to push her in. Mom came back out with her brush and bowl and dived breathlessly into the front seat. She'll be fine. Uh, I, I'm sure we caught it in time. But her hand shook and uh, uh, <clears throat> she stalled the car. She took a deep breath, tried again and edged us out into Sandy Lane, very slowly gained speed. I kept my hand on little one's back. Her breathing was fast and shallow. And how's your husband? The vet asked. Michael Spaulding, my dad, uh, had a reputation locally. Uh, not always a good one. Uh, he'd been in the press with a think piece, if you call it that saying we should imagine animals as a kind of person. He'd written articles attacking current veterinary practice. <laughs> uh, good. He's, he's fine. Good. Thank you. Uh, we've come with Teddy, my son. Uh, this is his cat. He's very fond of her. The waiting room was full of people standing, maybe 50 of them with only five chairs. It is doing the rounds, said the vet. Of course, in this heat, some of them are having kidney problems. Don't put her to sleep, said Mom. The vet's face fell. Oh, no, no. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll rehydrate her uh, intravenously. If we think there's anything else, we'll also give her an antibiotic. You, you did well to bring her in so quickly. Mom looked relieved, her smile uh, fluttering. We'll do everything he can, but... He shrugged. There's a lot of sick animals, said Mom. As you can see, something's doing the rounds. The vet bent over to look into little one's eyes. She'll be okay. What's her name? <laughs> I tried, <laughs> but I couldn't say it. Mom kept rubbing my shoulder like it was the magic lamp. So Mom told him, and he said the name again. Leave her with us, and we'll give you a call as soon as we know anything, all right? I looked into little one's face and told her we had to leave. And not to be scared. We'd be back for her. Her eyes looked into mine and uh, I knew she'd understood. She'll be home tomorrow, the vet promised. We drove home slowly. When she wasn't changing gears, Mom had her hand on mine. Back home, there was no sound in the house. It was as if all the sound had been turned into heat. The French doors, the terrace doors, all the windows were open, but nothing moved. Mom and I tried to focus on fractions and percentages. And I still can't do percentages. Beetroot salad with pine nuts for lunch. The salad was hot by the time we got it to the table. I think I'll put up shutters, said Mom. You know, like Italian or French houses. Shutters block the sun. The field and the sky were gray with haze. They seemed to merge as if the earth curved upwards. The phone rang. Mom jumped up and said, Yes? Hello? Yes? A wary, 
Yes, I see. Yes. Thank you, Doctor. Mom stood like she was in church, though she was in shorts and a halter neck. I'm sorry, honey, but little one is gone. I thought so, I said. Do you want to go get her? She was peering anxiously into my face. <laughs> I could move. <laughs> if you don't want to. I want to. I still couldn't move. Mom dangled the car keys. Do you want to stay here? <laughs> I stood up. The funny thing was that I felt like we were going to see her alive. I almost felt happy I was going to see my cat. There were even more cars in the parking lot. This time there were no spaces at all. At the clinic or along the street, we had to park in the building next to Marks and Sparks, so it was a ten minute walk. <laughs> I took the vet cage with me like she was coming back alive. The heat from the pavements came through the soles of my sandals. The vet assistant looked stricken when she saw me. She came out wide-eyed, carrying something wrapped in a blanket. Another blanket, not her blanket. I still expected a little one to stick her head out from under it. To give her head a shake, or her ears a twitch. The wound passed the bundle to me and I could feel that was what was inside it. It was already stiff. Mom snatched the vet cage up from the floor. <laughs> I was amazed at the grief I felt. She was just a cat. A wonderful cat, but she was gone, and that was that. All used up. Dust and bones. Stupid, I did a little mew to call her. A bit down on both my lips to stop myself. <laughs> oh, Teddy, said Mom. I walked out carrying the bundle at arm's length like it was trash. The vet ran after us. Mrs. Spaulding, Mrs. Sorry, but you should probably burn the body. How much do we owe you? No, 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 please, we'll send you the bill, but, but really, it, it might be better to leave the body with us. My husband is an expert, Mom started to walk. Yes, exactly. I, I'm sure he'd say this is extremely upsetting, that perhaps it's best to dispose. So, thank you and have a nice day. Outside the car, my mom said, give little one to me, honey, okay? Let's make sure she's comfortable so we can take her home. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm not stupid, Mom. I'm not a baby. Just, just, there we go. Mom put the bundle in the cage. Do, do, do you want to sit in the back seat next to her? She's not there. It, it had been a good thing to hold the body. It told me at a very deep level that Whatever little one had been was no longer with me. No, honey, she's not, said Mom. She leaned in and put the cage on the floor of the car to stop it sliding around, and I got in the front seat. Home, Mom ran into the house with the vet cage and hid it somewhere. I never found it. Then she went straight to the phone and rang Faith and then told me Faith is on her way. And then another phone call. 
to my father. Michael, this is me. I'm afraid the little one has died. Yes, we think so. She looked up and asked me, Teddy, you want to talk to your father? No, I did not. He's, he's shaking his head. He's pretty upset. Mom looked up at me again. Are you sure, honey? Talk to Daddy? Yep. <laughs> Swing in my head. No, no, no. I, I think we better leave it, Michael. Can you get here? By the time Faith sailed down our driveway, I already had the shovel out. I knew where little one was going to rest, on the mountain of ash where we always sat reading. We could still read there together. That'll be the right place, said Faith. You're no use with that shovel, though. Give it here. I didn't let it go. You don't let the chief mourner dig. I let a 75-year-old woman finish the work. I, I had thought of the mountain partly because the ash was light and easy to shift. In short order, Faith had dug an elbow-deep trench. What were we going to do with her bowl and her brush? Give them to another cat? I lay them next to her. I felt like an ancient Egyptian. Uh, burying her with grave goods to help her along on that lone, lonely trip so that she would know that we thought of her. I just wanted her to have them. There you go, little one. There you go. Little, little, little one. Little, 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 little. I stopped. It's hot out here. You better go back inside, said Faith. I knelt and started scooping the coal ash back with my hands. It left my hands as black as ink. The dark lodged under my fingernails. It stayed for days. I patted down the ash. The sun was so strong through all those leaves that my skin felt wrinkled, <laughs> like the surface of an old pot of cream. I went in and sat down on the sofa and just stared. Mom sat next to me and snapped on the radio and got on with her darning. We listened to Radio 3, the jazz show. Mom knelt in front of me her eyes wide. And I thought, it's all right. I get it. I have to lose everything. I had no father, no friends. I had my mom. Honey, I know you love that little animal. I'm sure she loved you. She came when you called? She got into the cage just like that? She knew you were only going to help her. She pressed her cheek against mine. It was as slimy and sticky as a slug. I'm okay, Mom. My voice was probably too loud. Everything dies. I know that, okay? She wasn't old yet. But it was the heat, or maybe, yeah, she died of this thing. Which is no buddy's fault. So, Mom, how about you let me grow up a little bit? Huh? Who knows? Maybe I might even be able to face school and get out of this house.